Bwana asifiwe. Um, my name is Elizabeth Kongo. I'm born again this morning. I love Jesus Christ. He's my Lord and my Savior. I want to start by honoring mom in the house and bishop in absentia and also the pastoral and the leadership of this church for trusting me with the pulpit this morning. And as I thought about it, I thought, I'm just a, a voice. And you see, even though I'm speaking through this microphone, what I'm saying does not belong to it. It's only echoing what I'm saying. And the same with me. I just want to echo what the Father is saying to us this morning. And we are looking at our topic, mounting up through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Mounting up through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Um, I, I think this is one of the things that excites me, the blood of Jesus. Um, and I'm going to share with you what the Lord has laid in my heart, and I know as we finish, you will appreciate the blood of Jesus Christ. Of course, you and me are what we are. We are born again because the blood of Jesus cleansed us. So we are saying the significance of a blood sacrifice is based on the fact that life is offered for the saving of another life. In the olden days, or in the spiritual realm, sacrificial death takes place in order that another might have eternal life. A sacrificial death takes place so that another might have eternal life. And in the Old Testament, if you look at the book of Leviticus 17 and verse 11, this is what the Bible says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So life is in the blood, and the only atonement that can be given is through the blood or through the, another life. Uh, the other thing is good to know that there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. You and me cannot be forgiven. You and me cannot be cleansed without the shedding of, the, of blood. And uh, we can look at the book of Hebrews 9 and 22. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. You and me can never be forgiven without the shedding of blood. We have no forgiveness. We had no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. And the other thing to note is that animal blood was offered for atonement. I had already said that in Leviticus 17 verse 11. It was offered for our atonement. And for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Something else to note is that animal life was offered to ratify a covenant between man and God. Animal life in the Old Testament was offered to ratify a covenant between man and God. Hebrews 9, verse 19 and 20. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet, wool, and high soap, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people. Verse 20, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. So we are saying in the Old Testament an animal life was offered to ratify a covenant between man and God like we see in this case where Moses is saying the Lord has sealed this covenant between us and him. Something else to note is that blood sacrifice was offered annually. Hebrews 9 7. It was offered annually but in the second part the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. So every year in the Olden Testament, once a year, the high priest would go carrying the blood of animals so that he can plead for his own sins and for the sins of the Israelites. 
Uh, something else to note, animal sacrifice could not bring forgiveness of sins. Hebrews 10, 1 to 4. Hebrews 10, 1 to 4. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshippers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. So that explains why we come to the New Testament. The, the blood of the bulls of calves, goats, and sheep could not fully you know, remove the guilt of our sin. So that was the Old Testament. And I can imagine how it was every time men and women met for worship. You came with your bull, you came with your pigeons, you came with your goat, and you can imagine the, the work that was involved. And the, everyone who comes with it, the high priest or the priest have to slaughter so that you can enter with this, that blood to worship the Lord. We should be forever grateful that the Lord Jesus Christ came, died for us, that you and me can walk clean and sit clean, but washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Can't we give the Lord Jesus Christ a clap? Yeah. And the beauty about this, whether we have or we don't have, so long as we have Jesus, we have the blood. You cannot say, me, I'm poor. Or me, I will not go because today I have no sacrifice. It was offered once and for all. So I want us to look at the New Testament blood offering of Jesus and its accomplishments. So we'll combine the, all of it. The New Testament blood offering of Jesus, stroke accomplishments. Number one, Jesus offered his blood only once for all men of all time. That includes you and me. Though he died about 2,000 years ago, he offered a sacrifice once for all men of all time. And I'm so glad that I'm included in this sacrifice. John 19:34. Uh, we can look at it together. John 19:34. it says, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. You may be wondering, where is the blood we are talking about? The soldier at the cross pierced the Lord at the, at the side. And the Bible records, blood and water came out. Hebrews 9, 15, and then 25 to 28. Hebrews 9, this is what the Bible says, verse 15. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Verse 25. Note that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of, of, of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Praise the Lord. We are talking of a great covenant done once for all men of all time and you don't have to come every year with the same blood. No, the blood of Jesus Christ avails for each one of us. We can walk with victory because of the sacrifice of the Son of God on the cross. And I can celebrate the finished work of the cross for me 
it avails for me this kind of cleansing. Number two, the new covenant instituted by the blood, I, I mean the new covenant or the New Testament covenant was instituted by the blood. Matthew 26, verse 28, this is what it says. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And Mark 14, 24, Mark 14, 24, Mark 14, 24, we are saying the new covenant of the New Testament was instituted by the blood. This is what the, uh, the Bible says. And he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Our new covenant, our new testament covenant was instituted by the blood of Jesus Christ. We eat and drink, number three, we eat and drink Jesus' blood. John 6, 53 to 56. We eat and drink Jesus' blood. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, and as you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I'll raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. If you remember um, the happenings around this scripture, Jesus was still alive and well with the disciples. And he's telling them, if you don't eat my, my flesh and you don't drink my blood, you have no eternal life. And the Bible records, many of them left. They wandered here. Now this man has, has done so much. Finally, he wants us to eat him and to drink his blood. And many were offended and they left the Lord. I don't know. I think it could be the same today. We may not do it physically. But aren't many offended of the blood of Jesus Christ? Haven't you had people complain? Hey, munasemaka mumeokoka. Ati munaenda binguni. Munajifanya nyi inu atakatifu kuliko. See, that is what they are saying. They are saying, how do you? How dare you think you are better than us? But we can dare. We can dare. With boldness. We know. For real, for sure. The blood of Jesus Christ has made me what I am today. I'm the one who was not born again. And I'm the one who got born again. I'm the one who bore my sins until the day they were cleansed. So I am the testimony. You can't edit my testimony. Neither can I edit yours. And how do I know that you are born again? You believe with your heart and with your mouth you confess to salvation. Now if you haven't confessed, you want somebody to confess it for you? And yet you get offended that somebody is confessing. Please, if you are in this house and you have never made it a public confession about the blood of Jesus Christ, I want to put you on notice that the Lord is coming a second time. This time not to save you. This time he's coming as the Lord of Lords and King of Kings and as a judge like we have just read in the book of Hebrews. So you better learn to eat the body of Jesus Christ and learn to drink the blood of Jesus Christ, and better do that daily so that you can have eternal life. Now, number four, something I want to bring forth is that we commune with the blood of Jesus. First Corinthians 10, 16. How do we commune? How do we have communion with the Lord? How do we have communion even with one another? Uh, First Corinthians 10, 16, it says, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? This is why it's so important. And I'm praying we can practice this even in our homes. You don't have to wait until we are allowed to take Holy Communion together here. The beauty is you can do this every day in your house if you choose to. And it will be so meaningful. Because the only way we remain in communion with Christ is by the blood of of Jesus Christ. The only way we remain in communion with each other is by the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Now, number five, I want to say this again, that we are brought near to God by Jesus' blood. How you and me can dare say I'm born again, I'm a child of God. It's just by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are brought near to God by Jesus' blood. In the book of Ephesians 2.13, but now in Christ, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You and me. First of all, you remember we were not even Jews. We are Kenyans. But thank God when he came to them, they refused him. And that's how you and me got an opportunity to be able to partake of this communion, to be born again and to be called a child of God. Did you know were it not for the death of Jesus Christ, you and me were condemned to hell even before you were born. But praise God, you have a choice this, uh, uh, this morning. You can choose Christ. You can choose to be cleansed by this blood. You can choose to have communion with Christ, with God and the Holy Spirit through the blood of the Son of God. And it is a choice. Nobody is forced. But the truth is, without this blood, there is no remission of sins. And there is no heaven for you. Buana atusaidie sana. Amen. Revelation 1 5. This is what I'm saying. We are set free by the blood of Jesus. We are set free by the blood of Jesus. Revelation 1 5 says, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins. In his own blood. We are set free. We are cleansed. We are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Verse, I mean, number seven. Just, we are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Why you and me can dare say we are born again. We are going to heaven. It's because we've been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 5.9. Romans 5, 9, this is what it says. Much, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We are justified by the blood of Jesus. We shall be saved and we are saved from wrath daily through him. The next one I'm saying is that the atoning sacrifice is accomplished by the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no atonement. Remember we had said in the Old Testament the atonement came by the death of an animal so that you could walk with the same blood to the, whole, to the, to the uh, temple. But now we are saying the atoning, the atoning sacrifice is now in the New Testament accomplished by the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 3 verse 25. Romans 3 verse 25. Whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. Is that the end of that verse? Um, we are saying the atoning sacrifice is accomplished by the blood of Jesus Christ. So no other, no other sacrifice, no other way no other uh, item can be replaced with the, with the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Number nine, we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You and me, we have redemption. You know we sinned. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned, all of us were counted sinners. And we were cut off from a relationship with our Father. But praise be to God, when Jesus Christ came and died on Calvary, he bought you back. He redeemed you. He paid for your life. If you remain on the other side, it will be your own choice. But the sacrifice and the redemption has already been paid. And you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In the book of uh, Colossians 1.14, Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Hebrews 9.12, let's read 
not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. You and me are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Number 10, we have peace with God through the blood of Jesus. We have peace with God through the blood of Jesus. We have peace with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.20 And by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. You and me, we have peace with God and even with each other through the blood of Jesus Christ. And by 11, we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13, 12. Hebrews 13, 12. They are for Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. 1 John 1, 7. The letter of John 1st. John 1, 7, this is what it says. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Revelation 7, 14. And I said to him, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of of the lamb. John is seeing a vision in heaven, the revelator. And he's wondering, he's asking the angel, he's asking the Lord, who are they? Who are these? Who are clothed in white robes? And he's told, these are the ones who have come through great tribulation, but they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Amen. 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 Let's look at um, number 12. We are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Acts 20, 28. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. This is... Um, Paul, who is cautioning the shepherds, the overseers of the people of God, and he's warning them, take heed to yourself, even as you shepherd these people, because they were purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. They were purchased with his own blood. You and me are bought with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20, this is what the Bible says, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Verse 20, for you are bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Both you, your body, your spirit, your soul belong to God, so may you glorify the Lord with them. You've been bought. First Peter 1, 18 and 19. First Peter 1, 18 and 19. Knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Buona sifiwe. Are we still there? Tell your friend behind your mask, we were bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Say it again like you mean it. Yes, number 13, we are victorious over death by the blood of Jesus. Even the death that comes of wave 3 of coronavirus. We are victorious over death by the blood of Jesus Christ. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. 
Once you are washed and bought and redeemed and justified by the blood, then we need to hear it from your mouth, talking of the blood, of the redemption, of the saving grace of our Father and our Master. The only way you'll be victorious is by the word of your testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. So I concur with people who want people to see their good deeds. Good deeds are good. But it's also good to testify of your good deeds with your own tongue. So we are victorious. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. That I am able to overcome by the word of my testimony. And the blood of Jesus Christ. Meaning you have to be careful what you say even in the season we are in. So, ukianza kusema saa tumekwisha, sisi kwisha. Si utakwisha tu. You have to be careful. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, I think verse 21, that the power of life and death are in the tongue. And those who love it, eat their, the fruit thereof. Now you have to choose which fruit you want to eat. If you want to speak like everybody else, or you choose to be different. I choose to be different. Because I'm overcoming. By the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of my testimony. And I declare with the psalmist, I shall not die. I shall live to declare the doings of the Lord in this season. Because the Lord has died for us. And by his stripes, we were healed about 2,000 years ago. Learn to appropriate that healing. In, in this season when every symptom looks like it's the wave 3 coronavirus, can you learn to testify over yourself? And claim and appropriate the blood of Jesus Christ upon your life. And declare, because I'm a, I'm a child of God. And because of the blood of the testimony. Then I shall live. To live to declare the doings of the Lord. You and me are victorious over death. By the blood of Jesus Christ. And by the word of our testimony. Now, number 14. We enter the holy of holies by the blood of of Jesus. We enter the Holy of Holies by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10 verse 19. This is what it says. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You and me, we don't need a high priest. By the way, the Bible calls you a, high, a priest. In the book of, is that 2 Peter 2.9 or is it 1 Peter 2.9? One of them. You and me are a priest. So, you go to the Holy of Holies carrying the blood of Jesus Christ. Bearing it. Testifying of it. You are able to take yourself to God direct. That means you don't have to wait until you come to church to be prayed over. And now that these days we are not even laying hands on you. So you'll be in trouble. Now learn to priest yourself. Najimokerea mkono. Na unasema mimi ni kuhani. Na ninatangaza uzima Natangaza damu ya kristo imetosha Mbwana asifiwe Amen We are learning new tactics Because we are in a new season Mbwana asifiwe Usigoje mkwekere mkono Serekali ya hita niruhusu Lakini we ukijiwekerea Hata ukisina sanitize niwewe tu Unasonga Mbwana asifiwe Amen So let's learn to enter to the holy of holies On our own behalf By the blood of Jesus Christ now, I want us to finish at number 15. Of course, you can't finish about the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't teach it here in 30 minutes or 40 minutes. I mean, the blood that was poured for all men of all time in 40 minutes. But at least I'm sure you are going home with something. You can use it this week and declare, because Christ lives, I can face tomorrow. I can face today. And by the blood of Jesus Christ, and the word of my testimony, I have the victory. So, number 15, one can turn from the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10, 29. Hebrews 10, 29, this is how it says. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose? Will he thought, uh, be thought worthy who has tram uh, trampled the Son of God at the foot? Counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. I wouldn't be surprised if we have those who have known the, the power of the blood, but they have 
turned around, trampled on it, despised the blood, and of course, it goes without saying, you miss it out. But there also, you could be there. You never even knew that you are refusing, you are trampling on the, uh, trampling on the blood of Christ. Because you have never received him, you have despised his blood. That's why you sit there Sunday by Sunday in a Pentecostal church, not born again, and every Sunday you still come. It is time to turn towards the blood of Jesus Christ. So in summary, what are we saying? We are saying the blood of Christ accomplishes so much for us. Our forgiveness, our redemption, our atonement, our justification, our reconciliation, our cleansing, our holiness, our new life, our new covenant, and the power of a Satan and much more. With this, you can walk with your shoulders high and tell yourself, the new week has come by the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ. I walk victorious. I walk whole. I walk like one who has been redeemed. I'll walk like one who is bought by the king of kings. Like I belong to the, to the kingdom that is eternal. I'll walk and I'll not be weary. Mounting up by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's give a clap to the Lord Master. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to be on our feet very briefly. And maybe I'll ask the, the worship team to help me. Have you, have you been to the cleansing? Maybe one or two. And then if you are there, you have never known the Lord Jesus Christ. With all boldness, with this kind of a sacrifice, right at the crossroads on Calvary, would you be ashamed to receive the Christ who died for you and loved you and wait on you. Hallelujah.